question and answer questions and answers any question from all the sections career talk marriage and all from the beginning to the end to where we stop we have right here any question please i expect questions from the youth now any question we have several questions already any question okay please i want the ushers to help us with the man Praise the Lord. My question goes, so is long period dating a sin? Because there's a saying that says that dating um, sets the pattern for the marriage. That's the question, sir. Okay. Is long period dating a sin? A sin. All right. That will be... Okay, uh, that question will be handled by uh, Father Pastor Adigo. Praise the Lord. This issue of dating is like I can't understand. You mean courtship or dating? No, let him. I said this dating of no, a thing. No, courtship. Uh -huh. so that is towards marriage. Okay, that uh -huh. is it a sin? Yes, sir. To have a long courtship. It's not a sin, depending on the standard of your church. Are you in this church? Most times, some people say that it's not um, good due to some teaching. Uh, I'm asking whether you are in this church. No, sir. Okay. Where are you from? CAC members. Okay. How, how, do you, how do they handle it for you there? How do they handle the issue of marriage when it comes to courtship? In some churches, it can be six months, can be three months, depending on the, on the, on the standard they want to adopt. But there is nothing wrong in long dating, but the, the courtship should not be too long. But uh, my own belief is that it is when someone is um, maybe responsible. You know, for some people, now let me so does not have the knowledge. Just let me say, they can just let me, let me just try to know whom the person is. And we all know that the saint is not written on the forehead. And why some people, let me say, after giving a short period or long period, they even regret at the end of getting married. The thing is this, if truly you pray and you pray through and God chose your bone of bones and your flesh of flesh, there won't be any problem. But the problem with us today is you walk from answer to question. But if, God, if you really prayed and God leads you, this is the person that will be your wife or this is the person that will be your husband. Whether you date, you, you, cut, you cut long or short, everything will be okay. So you know, sir, but in our society today, the society has been so corrupt. My brother, we are, talking of, the... we are talking of Christians now. Yes, sir. Okay. Even among the Christians, sir, we can still bring out Christians. There's a, one of my mentors I went to. I was talking about Christians. Due to some attitude, he said they were not Christians. And these people have been a church member for a series of, let me say, more than 10 years in church. You remember our daddy said, right inside church, we have unbelievers. You remember he said so. So, whatever, staying in the church for long doesn't mean that you are a believer. You can see some people, they can be in church for 10 years, 15 years. Somebody that is in the church for 5 years can still teach them. There was a, a topic like that on relationship. 
So the man asked the question. He said, uh, the man said he has been in courtship for five years. The man asked, doing what? Ah, then there is a problem. So the man... The only situation... Let me tell the you... Man the man told him he's not ready for marriage. Wait. Let me tell you this today. Courtship, six months, three months, it's okay. Now, by the time you are going, except if one of them is not ready. Maybe the one, one is a student still in school, then the husband is the husband to be is waiting, or the husband is in the school, the wife to be is waiting, then that can only be reason why courtship should be for years. Otherwise, six months, three months is okay. Second After question, they sir. might have been prayed and prayed through. Second question, sir. How can one recognize the voice of God when the time for marriage comes? How do you recognize the voice of God? It depends on how you relate with your God. If you have good relationship with God, God can speak to you in diverse ways that you will know that yes, this is God talking to me, this is God speaking to me. Thank you, sir. Four questions here. What are the roles of the man and the woman in marriage? What are the roles of the man or woman in marriage? Number two, is it good to honor or obey your spouse in the social activities aspect? I don't understand that question. Three, how do you know the right man in terms of character or attitude towards you? Four question, number four question, why is it that our Christian homes that always have some, that always have some problem in marriage rather than unbelievers marriages i think that is regardless of the semantic problem there i think that is very clear so pastor rebecca sir, can you please help us to have these four questions Praise the Lord. The first question says, what are the roles of the woman or, wom or man in marriage? Well, in marriage, the man is commanded to love his wife. Why? Because man's heart is very very difficult to convince i'm sorry to use that word it is easier for a woman to love man than a man to love a woman so the first thing that man must love his wife the wife also must love the husband, but the man must go extra mile to love the woman. And on the part of the woman, the woman has to be submissive to the man because the man is the head of the home. Though the two must work together, and that is why the Bible says that can the two work together unless they agree. And those are the things our Father in the Lord that took that uh, lecture has expanded a lot to us. The two of you must believe in the same thing. You must have the same foundation as regards your faith. Because that is the basic thing. The two of you must be converted. You must be drinking from the same source. That was why we are told in that paper that don't attempt to go to marriage with an intention that after marriage you are going to convert 
your spouse. Though there are some other responsibility because the man also must be able to stand in the gap and protect that woman against external uh, let's say let me use uh, the word external abuses. Not when your family members come you as a man you will also team up with your family and be complaining against your wife. You should look for a way of making sure that your wife is not projected in a negative manner in the presence of your family. Though, if your wife has weaknesses in the private, you will tell your wife, there, look at this area, look at that area, look at this area. You will prayerfully do that. Praise the Lord. Secondly, the second question says, is it good to honor or obey your spouse in the social activities aspect? It still boils down on the first thing. The two of you, you must know what you believe in. It has to start from the foundation where you are building your relationship. Because if your wife is the type that is always, uh, always uh, liking to attend social activities to the detriment of spiritual development or to the, development, uh, to the detriment of one's commitment to his Lord and Savior, then there is a problem there. And the two of you must work together Prayerfully, you pray together, you read the word of God together, you must have time even to discuss about issues affecting your family. And the most important thing is that during your courtship, and that is why it is said that that period is meant for the confirmation of what God has revealed. So many issues should be sorted out during your courtship period especially the key issues of whether your wife will be a career based even if she's working with the kind of person you are looking for your wife your wife to be will also tell you this is the person i'm looking for this is how we arrange that this in in some cases issues of how many children you want to have or how you want to run your family how you want to treat your financial issues those things will come up and during that period of time, you should be able to know the kind of person you have. That's why you need to be watchful and be sensitive in the spirit. During your courtship time, you should know your spouse to some extent. You might not know the person fully. Because a case uh, in point, that was something that happens sometimes. And I used to tell people, I was, because... Um, by the grace of God, as a youth in the Lord, I married. And uh, I went through some processes, whether you call it long or short. So at a time, during the period of a courtship, there was an issue that we needed to sort out that time. And as we discussed over that issue, time over time, time over time, we could not reconcile. And the Spirit of God was telling me that if you should go ahead, because let me just be open, what happened was that that sister was insisting that she will always listen to the dictation. That is what the parents will be telling her. And I had to tell her, I said, well, I don't think you are the right person for me because it means that my marriage will be tied especially to your mother. May God help us in Jesus' name. So whether you should always give in to your wife as regards social activities or not is something that you need to pray very well. But that has a lot to do with the way you have been able to discuss things during your courtship period. But if 
those things have not been discussed, then when it comes up, it does not mean that the man will always have his way at home. No, both of you must discuss it. If there are things you observe in your spouse, probably after marriage, that you are not so much uh, in support, you discuss prayerfully. You don't just use force that, no, 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 stop this. You can't be doing this in my house. Or, no, you need to prayerfully discuss with that person. And I believe that by the grace of God, you will be able to come to a common point. The top point, how do you know is the right man or woman in terms of character or attitude towards you? You, you need to lean on God in that area because the heart of man, the heart of woman, man in a generic word. I don't mean just a man uh, as someone like me or this thing. I mean a boy, a girl, a woman, a man. The heart is very deep. And who can know it unless God reveals it to you? So that is why during your courtship period, you need to pray very well and get conviction about it. And that is why this uh, lecture that is coming up to us today is very, very important. The processes of hearing from God, you must be very conversant with those processes. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ said, that I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They will hear my voice. So if you really give yourself to God, if you are converted, if you are born again, as you pray to God, God will reveal so many things to you. Even this morning, I was telling my wife, I said, well, I took some decisions just about a few months ago. But this time around, it's as if God is now telling me that that decision you took, it was like Samuel seeing Eliab, saying, this, surely this is the man I have chosen. But God told him that, no, this person has refused. And when I now told my wife what God said concerning that issue, she also confirmed this sin. The Spirit of God confirmed it in her. That this. So you need to surrender fully to God. You need to allow God. It's not what somebody will stand here and be telling you that uh, this man, if he exhibits this character, uh, it's not this, it's not that. Though there are, some, uh, uh, there are some feasible marks that you observe in a man. Any man that is always... Uh, 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 is, that is always uh, annoyed to destroy things. You need to be very careful. Any man that is telling you that he's born again, but he is still telling lies. I don't think God is having hands in such a, a, a proposal. Or any man that is telling you that God is leading him to you, or any woman that is saying that you are the one for his life, and that person. You see, having someone somewhere hanging, those things are some of the physical things. But the hidden things, the secret things belong unto, uh, unto the Lord. It's only those things that are revealed to us. Those things are for us. They are for our children. So that we might do those things that are written in the book of the Lord. That is, those things that are visibly written in the word of God. Let's compare what that person is exhibiting with what are written in the word of God. If anybody is doing something contrary to the word of God and is, he or she is not ready to change, that brother that is still smoking, that brother that is still taking alcohol, that brother that is doing things contrary to the word of God, I don't think he is suitable that person will not make a profitable marriage. And four, why is it that in Christian homes that always have some always have some
problems in marriage rather than the unbelieving unbelieving marriages where there are so many things that could be uh, contributory to that one it might be that the marriage was not actually uh, ordained by God I'm not saying that every marriage that is ordained by God will be free of challenges no even marriages ordained by God they have so many challenges to contend with. That is point one. Point two. It might be as a result of the devil attacking that home. Because the devil is there looking for whom to devour. And apart from that, his own purpose is to kill, even is to destroy and to steal the joy in that home. So it might be as a result of the devil attacking that home. And three, it might be probably God just permitted that to strengthen that home. I had similar experience, though not in, in terms of a marriage, but in terms of a career. I told my wife later when I passed through that challenge that if i had not passed through that challenge i would believe that nobody could uh, uh, nobody could put somebody into trouble concerning what he knew nothing about it could be that god is just permitting it to strengthen your faith or for you to learn a particular lesson so that you will grow in your christian life but the person is making comparison with uh, unbelieving homes. Let me tell us, most unbelieving homes too, they have challenges they contend with. They have so many problems they contend with. They will not tell you. They will not tell you that these are the challenges I'm passing through or that. Many of them, they are enduring those problems. They are enduring those challenges. And if you are a regular reader of uh, all these social magazines and this, you will read so many uh, uh, society marriages that within a period of uh, a month or even a few years, those marriages, they collapse. But above all, we should have trust in God and we should pray, be prayerful and then be deeply rooted in our relationship with the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now, because of our time, we just um, answer one or two questions here. And the question I'm going to read from here will be answered by uh, Mommy Adigo. Please, man, kindly come forward to help us out of this question. Why is it that most of the will of God today are irritating and embarrassing. But, uh, Julius. Mommy, why is it that today most of the will, most of the real will of God are irritating and embarrassing? That's it. Come again, sir. Why is it the way of God? Why is it that most of the real will of God today are irritating and embarrassing? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Our daddy here have said it all. In everything we want to do, maybe in concerning the marriage, to know God's will in marriage is not something that just sleep and say you see somebody uh, taking umbrella maybe when you are taking gary just dip his hand in that gary maybe that's the will of god for your life let me take my own for example when i was still single i've not married i've not given my life to the lord jesus christ of 1989 i prayed i was in christ apostolic church by then that was early 80s 85 stroke 89 
So I pray as if I will not pray again. Nobody asked me to fast. I will put myself in dry fasting. I will go on maybe seven days fasting, nine days praying that I don't want to regret in marriage. I don't want to regret in life that I need to pray. I did not go to any pastor. I did not go to anybody. I was alone. A time when I come back from school, I will lock myself in and pray, pray, pray until I, 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 I will be, I have that relief in me that God has. I continue that prayer until God give me my own right partner. But the will of God or the will of God for our life, at times many will say, ah, I cannot marry. There, there is a case of a brother in our, in our former church. That sister is well to do well educated. And look at the brother, he's just a mechanic. And that's the will of God. He, she prayed, and God, this is your right husband. So the sister just accepted that uh, we. Eventually, they got married. The sister asked you, you know, ah, if really this is my husband, it must be up to the standards. The brother went to all this uh, part-time school. He became a graduate, and they were well to do. They are multimillionaire now. What am I saying is that you don't look down. Maybe uh, the the brother is not well educated. You are a graduate. You have master degree, PhD, and so on. Or in case of a brother as well, you may say, "Ah, uh, I cannot marry a, 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 a secondary school a, a lady." You can bring him or her up and pray if it is the real will for your life and you really pray and god show you this is the will of god for your life you go ahead you will not regret but my daddy has said something you is everything is not on the bed of roses even if it is god's will there may be challenges you are going to face in the course of uh, marrying each other but with god by your side there will be victory so that's my own contribution concerning you. Thank you. Man. All right. The last question here. Okay. Why is it that most guys in church today calling themselves believers ask for sex before marriage? Okay. Because of time. On no account should you go into any sexual wherever with anybody before marriage. So I don't need to need to call that to answer that question. That is it. Anybody demanding for sex is a bad person. It's not a child of God. And that person, you must run away from him or her. So because of time, that is that. Sex before marriage is not allowed. Sex, top sex, down sex is not allowed. Top sex is romantic from the breast to the waist. It's not allowed. Down sex Real sexual intercourse. Top sex, down sex, both of them are abomination before God. Manic is honorable in all, with bed on the file. Thank you, and God bless you. All right. Let's take go now to the next section. Our daddy will come up now to lead us in prayers. That's our daddy, Pastor Adigo. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. I think uh, we, ha we have had a lot today. Uh, we have shared experiences before we, we married, even after marriage. And my prayer is that those of us that have not married, if you can pray, God is a faithful God. I think uh, this question is uh, is uh, is is about family planning, whether it's good or not. Uh, I think we, those of us that are here now, 
should not ask this type of a question now. Because you are not married yet. So how can you be asking for family planning? You are married. You want to say something? Are you the one that wrote? About if you don't tell our people the truth about family planning now, when they get married, issues might and the truth is this, sir. If we don't prepare our youths with this kind of information, then they may have problems. Let tomorrow, me tell sir. you, my brother. It is only married that should plan for family planning. Somebody that are not married. When they get married eventually, they want to give birth to children. When they give birth to the number of children they want, then let them approach the appropriate quarters for family planning. But it's, it's, it's a means of abusing ourselves. And in Christendom, it's not allowed and can never be allowed. When you are married, and you have what you want to have, then you can go to appropriate quarters for that. Am I true? My own is to pray now upon all what we have had. They just keep it to me that I should quickly attend to it. Shall we pray? All right. Let's rise up to pray. You must have gained one or two things today. And for our, for our youth in JS and SS, uh, they, they will be feeling that, look at these people. They just ignore us. They concentrated on spinsters and bachelors. It's not so. Uh, the Lord will bring you to that level. And while you are still there, continue, and it shall be well with you. Oh. It shall be well with you. Yeah. Let's thank the Lord for what he has done so far today. Before we continue with the rest uh, items on the program, let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank him. Open up your mouth unto the Lord today. Open up your heart unto him. Bless him. Thank him. Sparing your life to this hour for you to be a partaker in this program. Bless him. Adore his name. Is protection over you, provision for your needs, good health, sound health. Today you are not in the hospital, you are not on the sick bed, you are not in the prison yard. Is it because you are holier than those that are there? Is it because you can pray better? Let's bless the name of the Lord. You are not praying. Tell the people in the hospital to pray. You will see how they will be shouting. So open up unto the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. We start with our brothers and sisters in JS and Nurses that the Lord that gives wisdom, gives knowledge, gives understanding, we give and grant unto them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for them. Pray, tell the Lord. Lord, you are the one that gives it understanding. You are the one that gives it wisdom. You are the one that gives it knowledge to excel. Give and grant unto me if you are in that category. Pray. You are in JS now, you will be planning to go to SS class. SS class, you will be looking for admission. So tell the Lord, without success, you can't move ahead. Pray for success today. Tell the Lord, Lord, touch my brain. Let 
let your glory be revealed upon my life. In Jesus' name we pray. We now pray for our bachelors and spinsters now. You will tell the Lord, Lord, here am I before you. I don't want to choose by myself. One thing I'm requesting from you today, O oh Lord, give me your best. Not even my best now, but give me my best in Jesus. Give me your best in Jesus' name. Let's pray to the Lord. The way you pray this prayer will show whether really you are in business. Cry unto him today. Lord, I want your best. Not even my best. And when you give me your best, give me the grace to accept. We are not praying. It is better you pray now than to pray later. Go and ask the people that are praying later. It's not easy. But for you now, pray before you enter into it. There is no reverse gear in marriage. So pray, tell the Lord, Lord, help me to pray and pray through. I don't want to regret. In marriage, I don't want to regret. I don't want to endure. I want to enjoy my marriage. Somebody gave you her own experience and she's enjoying it now. So pray, tell the Lord. Give me the grace to pray and pray through. I don't want to regret. I don't want to endure. I want to enjoy the blessings of marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You will tell the Lord now. Every idol in my heart, today, I drop them. Idols in the heart. The man I want to marry must be tall, fair in complexion, riding cars, did this and this and that. Or the woman I want to marry should be like this, should be like this. Idol in the heart. Tell the Lord now. Lord, set me free from idolatry of art in Jesus' name. Let's pray to the Lord. Tell the Lord, it's not your fault, but it's the devil that want to ruin your marriage in future. Pray, I don't in my heart. Lord, remove it. And make my heart clean, free to do your will. To accept your will for my life. In Jesus' name we pray. For glory of God to be revealed in our lives, you need to exploit your youthful age. At your age, you are still agile. You can jump up and down. Why are you lazy? If somebody can become a houseboy to become what he is today, you know what it means. By the grace of God, I, if, if they are talking of people that really exploit their youthful age, I think I will be one of them. I, can, I was agile, I can move up and down, I can run, I can do this, I can do that. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, don't give up. Don't, say, don't take no for an answer. Where I was living with a cousin, is using me even worse than a houseboy. I look at myself. If I'm a houseboy, at least I will be enjoying it more than what I'm enjoying here. That's how I decided to be a houseboy. 
and faithfulness now come in because of that passage read. I was faithful, doing everything. The person decided to take up the responsibility of my education. What about that? So you find yourself somewhere, uh, uh, you are living with somebody, you are not faithful there, you are doing like this, you are doing like that, it's not your parent. Be faithful in whatever, whichever situation you find yourself. And by the grace of God today, what God says I will be. I think I'm, 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 I'm becoming that thing. By his grace. I, I'm now a pastor and I have my mark in my former church. By his grace, my profession, I have my mark there as an essence of your and valuer. So, you don't write yourself off. Don't give up. You are still young. What cannot you do? You are still young. Explore your youthful stage now, your youthful age now, in a profitable venture, and it shall be well with you. Oh. It shall be well with you. You will pray, Lord, this is my time. Let your glory be revealed in my life. I don't want to die a pauper. I don't want to die a miserable individual. I don't want to be a miserable person in life. Give me the grace. Give me the enablement to make use of this, my youthful time, to your glory. Pray to the Lord. Pray, commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. You are not praying. Uh, go and look at the people pushing cart on the road. What have they done with their youthful life? They have wasted it. They resign to faith. I don't have parents that will send me to school. I don't have this, I don't have that. Tell the Lord today, give me the grace. Don't want to live a miserable life. If you are faithful, if you obey God, God can make you to become whatever you want to become. Even your parents are poor, yes. Shouldn't be an hindrance. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. These are your children. In their youthful days. I commit them into your hand today. Lord, they want your glory revealed upon their lives. Academically, spiritually, maritally. Lord, I pray today. This is our heart desire together. Let it be fulfilled in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, if there is any external factor troubling anyone, disturbing anyone, hindering anyone that will not make your glory revealed today. We come against them. We cancel them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Our Father, spirit of laziness, spirit of, of, of indolence in the lives of these your people today. Let them be removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everyone with idol in the heart today. Let those idols be removed. Set their heart free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Those that are in the junior class, senior classes, Father, I pray today, you will promote them. Yeah. Your glory will be revealed in their lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. As they continue into adulthood, you will guide them. Yeah. You will direct them. Yeah. They will not fall. Yeah. They will not fail. Yeah. They will not faint in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because we know you have done it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray together for Jesus. Praise, praise, praise the Lord.